reading up behind Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank y'all for being here. Good to see everybody. Hey, buddy. <laughs> glad, you're, glad you're here. Uh, let's talk about those folks who couldn't be with us for whatever reasons this morning. The folks on the prayer list. Um, Nancy Fetty is going to have a heart catheterization. Help me, Gene. She's going to have some... Some other thing. They do an implant of some kind. You want to know what I'm talking about? Like a pacemaker? No, it's 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 Just something else. Oh, it's something I've never heard of. Before. I think she told well, me about that. Either. Either. You, you retired four years ago and everything changed. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. They do stuff. Mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Whatever. That's why you retired. <laughs> <laughs> she's she mm -hmm. having a catheterization tomorrow and a heart cath tomorrow and the <clears> day. Day. Do some sort of a little implant thing. I'm not sure what it is. So, but anyway, keep Nancy in your prayers. Okay. Uh, we saw Diane last night. She's mended and coming along pretty good, and she uh, probably would like to be here today, but I don't think she's supposed to drive yet. And she, she's not ready to run a foot race, but she's walking pretty fast. <laughs> she really is doing good. Good well. Yeah. Thankful for that. Uh, any updates on the any, anyone else? Lois has. I went to see Lois last yesterday evening, and um, she had gone to the doctor yesterday. They took her and had x rays done to see how she was coming along, mm -hmm. and she's healing just slow, very slow. And it will be. Yeah, and she's got, I think, two more weeks, and then I don't know what she'll do then, what the plan is. Go, she just wants visitors all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I know Mark's been really good about it. I got. I tried yesterday. I did go and see uh, Stephen. Uh, Stephen Johnson. I bought him a bunch of stuff for, uh, you know, some clothes and some underwear and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Not too good. Yeah, just continue to pray for uh, Stephen Johnson. Yeah. I talked to him for a while. And he's at the... Uh, I know. Does anybody know the name of that place so I can stop saying Woodman and Parham? <laughs> it's the rehab facility at Woodman and Parham. Does anybody know the actual name? No, the one that faces out on Parham? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Every, every time I mention it, I don't think anybody knows the proper name, so I was trying to find out the name. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because they're always like, patient first. I'm like, no, no, no. Just that. Okay. It's not the one thing. Fire trucks and ambulances keep going to us. Mary's going to have, she's having some problems yeah. with the nation. Yeah. Um, got to go right down for next week. And it might be that she's going to have the option of having surgery on it. She doesn't like that option, but that might be the best one for her, so I'll keep her in your prayers. I need replacement. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, I need replacement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Things are good nowadays. Good, they are. Yeah. You think they would replace my belly and give me some abs? <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a t what's that, a tummy tuck? <laughs> that's, that's what I need. <laughs> I don't need to be tucked, it needs to be thrown out. <laughs> oh, man. Two more. Um, yeah, I met a lady yesterday, and I don't know her son's name, but he is on the USS Wasp. He's in the Marine Corps, and they're headed to parts unknown, which I'm sure is the Middle East. And I told her I'd put him on our prayer list, and, but I don't know his name. I'll find it out Friday. Okay. But, yeah, he's in the Marine Corps. Young guy, 19 years old. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely pray uh, while we're at it for Israel. Yeah. Oh yes. That is. That should be for. That should be. I tried to encourage her because I told her, and you know, yeah. I said, you know, Wes was on his ship to the Middle East six weeks after nine one one, and so I said, I know what you're going through. I know yeah. how scared you oh, are. And, and the parents. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know. Mm. Okay. Service men. Yeah. You just. Oh, he's an emotional He's a. Airplane mechanic. Okay. Let's pray together. Yeah. God, we come to you this morning, and what a blessing and a privilege it is to, to be able to come to you. You said to bring bring to you all our cares and concerns and and leave them with you. And uh, so often we do bring things to you, but we don't leave them there. We drag them back with us and keep fretting over them, keep worrying over them. And that's like saying, God, you can't do what we ask you to do. God, please help us not to be that way. 
we think of all of these going on this on this prayer list. Uh, some have been been there for a long time, and will continue to be because time and miles have caught up with them, and they're just not able to do the things they used to do. But that doesn't mean you love them any less, or that we love them any less. We just see less of them. So we just ask you to give them a special touch. Let them, let them feel your love and your presence, and know that they are loved. We thank you for good results from uh, medical procedures here recently. We just praise you for that and ask you to continue to heal uh, in those cases. Father, the Father, for those in places of danger and uh, in the military and, and in law enforcement and other other others who face dangers of one kind or another, we just lift them all up to you, God, and ask you to wrap your arms around them and keep them safe, keep them well, and there too, let them know they're loved and that they're not forgotten. And in places in the world, Israel and so many others, other places, God, where there's unrest, we <coughs> just ask that people would know that there is a, a way to find rest and that ultimate rest is in you and through you. And they probably won't find it unless and until they seek you. Yeah, we pray for them, God, because that's what you want us to do. We thank you for First Church and for your blessings on us here over the years and, and right now. We're here for you because we need you and we love you. So we just ask your blessings on us now during this time. Help us to be more what you want us to be and less of what we are. We give ourselves to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, Ron, I got yes. a praise item I, I just want to share. My yeah. oldest granddaughter had her had a baby on Sunday, which was her birthday. Aww. And so, um, so this is her fifth child. And then Gabe's having a baby next month. So I have two great granddaddies. One just got here and another one on the way. Okay. Makes me smile. Yeah. <laughs> and the beat goes on. Yeah. Paula, did you say that the ladies meet on May the fourth at ten o'clock? Yes, sir. First Saturday. Yeah, first Saturday. Okay. Yeah, I, I kept saying the fourth, and I never did look to see if that was actually the first Saturday. Well, I cheated. I, looked, I just checked it out. Oh, okay. It yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, that's when we're going to meet. <clears throat> Are there any, any other events coming up that we need to <laughs> note in the bulletin? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> there was a battle I couldn't win. The harder I tried, it seemed, the more the more I failed. A better man trying to be against sin, I railed. On my own, my efforts seemed ever in vain. Sin not relenting over me, keeping its reign. A step ahead and two back, struggling to no avail. On track, doing better, only to again derail. Sin like a vice, holding me in its tight grasp. <clears throat> at my soul, grinding away as would a rasp. Then in a voice of love, strong and clear, came a sweet message I needed to hear. Why, he asked, do you, do you this burden bear? On me, he said, lay your load, I care. Recall you not, it was, on, it was I on Calvary's hill, there the cost of your sin put on my bill. I paid it all from sin's debt. You're now free to a better life. Come with me. I hold the key. Rescued now with Jesus, my outlook is bright. No longer under sin's cloud, but in his light. Temptations will come still, but alone I'm not. Hand in hand with Jesus, I'll avoid sin's blot. You want to talk about? You see that you that you know that the TV network, Animal Planet. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. We, we, we might try to go down that road, but maybe a little bit on some, some in some way. 
You ever, you ever take a walk in the woods, maybe in a park, or visit a zoo, or go to a farm, Uncle Charlie's, or Granddaddy's, or whoever's, and find yourself studying, admiring, and just looking at the, the wild animals and wildlife? Some of them you like, and others you're just just, just assume to avoid. But it's another way of, that God's power is, is revealed. So we're going to visit a few creatures now and see what they're like and how they fit into their lives or not. When it comes to the animals in God's creation, you're familiar with and can identify many of them. You know what cattle and horses and sheep and chickens and ducks look like. You could probably name several of the wild bird species that you see in your yard and outside your window. You know what deer looks like, and you know that the gray or reddish, sneaky little dog-like creature with the bushy tail that you saw running across the road is a fox. And most of these you identify by sight, a few by sound since their vocalizations are distinct and unique to them. And some you may identify by smell, thanks skunk. Mm -hmm. Even though that is one of my favorite animals, they're pretty little fellows. One of the most unusual creatures on earth has a bill like a duck. It's semi-aquatic, lays eggs, yet is a mammal. Usually the female will lay just a couple of eggs which develop in utero. Did I pronounce that right, Jean? Yes. Good. <laughs> for about 28 days and then incubate externally for about 10 more days. It has a beaver-like tail and webbed feet. Unusual character. As adults, these dark, brown, furry creatures weigh two to five pounds. Most, uh, mostly nocturnal, they feed on a diet mostly of aquatic life like crayfish. And they for forage not by sight, sound, or smell, but by electrolocation, which is the ability to sense electrical impulses from, from their prey. A spur on their hind legs is their defense mechanism, and they can be used to inject venom, painful with long-term effects in humans and lethal to, to uh, smaller animals. An endangered species, you'd have to travel to Australia or New Zealand to see the duck-billed platypus in the wild. In recent times, scientists discovered that this, its fur is biofluorescent. It glows green or blue under UV light. Just one more oddity about, about this little animal. <clears throat> officially um, classified as a mammal, yet it has all these other non-mammal-like characteristics. It's a reminder that God created everything in His way. He made and He makes no mistakes. His ways are perfect. His creation is perfect. This remarkable little, little animal may not fit in our boxes of what we think they should look like, but it functions exactly as it should according to our Creator's wise design. Genesis 1, 1 25 says, And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps or moves upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. How dare that anyone would suggest that this little animal, albeit complicated, is a freak of nature. We're complicated too, just in different ways. Another unusual little creature exists in some 200 subspecies of varieties. Their eyes are independently mobile, which means they can see separately two totally different fields of vision. When hunting prey, they can focus both eyes on the same object for, for depth, depth perception. The smaller varieties live in trees, their diet, diet uh, being mostly insects, which they catch with their long and very fast tongue. Walking on four legs, they move with a sway, or you might say a swagger, using their tail as a fifth limb, assisting in balance and for chain clinging to objects when needed. Perhaps their most interesting characteristic is the ability to change color, this being their only defense mechanism. They can change color to more closely blend in with their surroundings, thus their camouflage. And while the little chameleon uses its ability to change color to blend in for survival, people often try blending in with their surroundings too, and their reasons are not as, as benign. 
deeming acceptance by others as critical to happiness, people often make poor choices. We tend to label it conforming. Some people do a balancing act between being an individual and being part of a crowd. For a myriad of excuses, people are often afraid to stand back, even for the right reasons. In his letter to the Romans, Paul said in 12.2, And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The writer in Proverbs said in 4.14, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. It's best to avoid negative influences whenever we can whether it's in the form of people or some things. Another strong message on this is in 1 Peter 1, 14-16, which says, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which, which has called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be you holy, for I am holy. Just as gang members tend, think, uh, tend to think and act alike, or act like other members, and celebrities tend, tend to act like their peers, new Christians begin attending church and mingling with other believers. God has used that influence to make, to make a change in their lives. The new Christian is engulfed in a world of new people with attitudes and values that could be totally foreign to him. In a sense, she or he now is part of a different gang, learning, experiencing, and practicing a new way of life, God's way. So in this sense, transforming becomes conforming, but for the better. Values declared by Moses and later reinforced by David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Paul, Peter, John, begin to take, take hold of and in their heart. This is why we're instructed in Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. The people in your life matter. You, we need to be careful of those with whom we associate. And we need to be the stronger individual too. Mm. Sometimes that doesn't happen easily, but we have to stay strong. <clears throat> Let the chameleon do all the changing he wants to and needs to. But we should not conform to the world. Stick to God's precepts and principles and always seek His will for our lives. Now, bred for strength and low maintenance, this beast of burden was the John Deere for many farmers in days past and still around today those numbers have diminished. They're intelligent, very trainable, and usually pretty docile. They've also been known to be protective of the territory and guarding the other farm animals they live with against predators. A cross between a male donkey and a female horse, this creature with the long floppy ears we call a mule, has at least to some degree gotten a bad rap. They've been labeled as being stubborn and that label might be somewhat accurate. In the early years of the last century, I'm getting personal now, in the early days of the last century my family lived an agrarian lifestyle in the western part of Virginia. And they used mules um, for farming and to some, some extent for transportation. In my lifetime, growing up in the country, a few people used mules to cultivate their gardens when the tractor would do more damage than good. Mm -hmm. So you've heard, maybe you've used that term, stubborn as a mule. And maybe you had that phrase directed at you. I think I've heard it a time or two. I don't say from where. <laughs> I love you, honey. <laughs> oh, man. But stubbornness is a, is a trait that can, according to the dictionary, have somewhat conflicting meanings. The first is described as, uh, as uh, unreasonably obstinate, meaning a person might be unwilling to change even when all the evidence proves them wrong. We used to say such a person would argue with a fence post or with a sign that had no writing on it. The writer said in Proverbs 29.1, Whoever remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. 
Sadly, people can, can and have resisted the Holy Spirit until it was too late. They're singled out by name in Genesis. Throughout time, these creatures have been used and are used for food, beast of burden, and in early times were considered a symbol of status and wealth. Today we see cattle or cows as meat on the table or milk in the glass. And in modern times they still represent a valuable asset. Many cows become like pets, docile and easy going. Then there are the bulls which are cantankers and they seem to always be unhappy and mad at the world and don't want people around them. You ever known somebody like that? When I was a kid, here again, I'm being personal. When I was a kid, my dad had a few few cows which he milked, and he had one that was in particular. She was a Guernsey, if you're familiar with the breeds, and they named her Dandy. Dandy. She was as gentle as could be, but sometimes she just did not want to be milked. And would kick the milk bucket over, wasting all the milk. When my dad had a set of kickers that went around her hind legs, and with those on, she couldn't move her legs independently, then they were kind of locked together. So if she moved once, she moved them both and fell down, that wasn't good either. But he put, used those kickers and it, and it worked. <coughs> and when you think about it, sometimes we need a set of kickers too. Putting it nicely, we become unruly and need a restraint. And God has provided us that in His Word. Maybe the most familiar example is found in Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments which if we followed them, if we followed them, our lives would be exemplary. Jesus had this to say in Matthew 20, 22, 37 through 39. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. With the tens of thousands of laws, rules, regulations, and ordinances man has devised, none are better than these. These commandments established by God are or should be the foundation on which all other laws are based. Once again, folks, we're a little like Dandy, my dad's cow. We, we can be pretty nice, live, live clean lives, and do others no harm, and appear to live at the foot of the cross. But there are times when we need, a, we need a restraint. Our thoughts run wild and need to be filtered. Our tongue gets loose and needs to be bridled. Our actions get out of hand and need to be controlled. It might be a stretch, but when you think about it, many of man's, man's laws spell out the consequences for disobeying or trying to circumvent God's laws. Christian, the Bible, God's holy word, is the guide to lead us, the restraint to hold us back, and the reprimand when we don't do it, when we fail. Don't get too far from it. <coughs> yeah. It depends on speed to catch its prey, and this fastest of all land animals, God really did build for speed. With a large lung capacity and large heart, this sleek big cat can reach speeds of up to 70 miles an hour. The cheetah, a carnivore, is well adept at pursuing and catching its meals. Long, strong, yet slender legs and body allow it a fluid movement. And when running, its strides can reach as much as 20 feet. That's as long as it be the George almost. That's just one stride for it when it's really running. It's that. That's, that's, that's just along pretty good. <laughs> sure. Now, most men, when, or most people, when they run, they, they might they might get a six foot stride for comparison. Now, I think if I'd fall down in less than six feet if I tried to run. Speed of <coughs> Now its tail serves as a rudder of sorts so it can make quick changes in direction and for balance. Standing up to three feet at the shoulder with head and with head and body length of maybe five feet or so, it is a formidable predator. Its habitat is most of mostly in eastern and southern Africa, in Iran and southern Asia. And for comparison, since man doesn't rely on speed for survival but for sport, the undisputed runner of all time is a Jamaican named Usain, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, Usain Bolt, who holds the record 
speed like record for a human at 27.8 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. If not speed per se, the Bible speaks to urgency. In John 9, 4, where Jesus said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. In this life, in this life, everybody exists for a reason. And that's not just to occupy, occupy space and breathe air. <coughs> everyone, everyone has a God-given purpose in life. Everyone has dreams and aspirations, and we get up each day hoping that by the end of the day we will be a little bit closer to reaching those dreams. And we work hard to make it happen. But all these things are finite. They have a shelf life, and when we die, a whole lot of them die with us. Remember the old adage, only one life, it will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. Our priority then should be on things eternal, things which glorify and honor God, which is really our, our priority, our primary <coughs> Being created in God's image and as a professing, professing believer, we should never appear tarnished, stained, or out of character. It's our responsibility and privilege, our responsibility and privilege to live so as to point others to the God we love and serve, to sow the, sow the seeds to grow this kingdom. And the time is now. The writer said in Proverbs 27, 1, Boast not yourself of tomorrow, for you know not what a day may bring forth. And in his letter, James said in 4.14, in Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. No matter how long the day, referring to life, the night will come when no man can work, referring to death. So let's share the gospel with urgency today. In rural areas, seeing a flock of these usually white woolly creatures grazing over our grass chewing their cud makes a pastoral scene. They prefer to be in open areas rather than, than wooded and are diurnal, foraging in the uh, daylight hours. Domesticated, domesticated centuries ago, sheep are the most populous livestock in the world. Raised for their wool, meat, and sometimes milk. Didn't know that. These animals are often thought of as, as timid and are usually not aggressive. In a flock, one will establish dominance and the others will usually follow uh, that one. However, if they're panicked or spooked, they'll follow whichever one leaves first. They have little ability to defend themselves against predators and they're easy prey for coyotes, big cats, dogs, and large, even large birds of prey. An eagle, for instance, can pick up a lamb and leave with it. I'll get, I'll get off track a little bit. I used to pass by a farm going down to the northern neck area to work a lot in, in, in the springtime, long about February when the lambs would start to be, would be born. Those little lambs would be, honest to goodness, they were about the size of house cats. And they were playing all over the field. I'd stop watching for a while sometimes. Just, they were just pretty little fellows. I, I just like to watch them. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> um, because of their instinct to avoid confrontation, they often appear to be just a bunch of wimps, as we would say, afraid of everything, and they're, they're perceived as weak and frail. But all that said, they have been and continue to be an important part of God's creation in so many ways. Their economic impact aside, they've played an important role in religion and to some degree in scientific research. There are many references, references to sheep in the Bible which have significant meaning to us as believers. Of course, they were used for blood sacrifices before before the time of Christ, but they're um, to belong to be luck to belong is a good thing. To belong to God is the greatest thing. The writer in Psalm 103 said, "Know that the Lord He is God. It is He that has made us, and not not we ourselves." And then it says, and then it says, "We are His people and the sheep of His pasture." It is 
the greatest thing to belong to God. These familiar word, words in Psalm, in the, that first verse of Psalm 23 come to mind. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There's probably only two things we could we could add to that 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 one verse. Two things. Wow and thank you. Man's propensity to sin and God's gift of salvation to mankind through Jesus is stated and prophesied in Isaiah 53, 6 and 7, saying, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Jesus went to the cross. He didn't complain. He didn't say, God, don't let this happen to me. Father, don't let this happen to me. Your will, not mine. The Gospel of John, uh, the Gospel of John 129 says, The next day John, the Baptist here, saw Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, the perfect example. Let me finish that verse first. Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Christians, we have in Jesus the Lamb of God, mm -hmm. the perfect example, the perfect and pure role model, mm -hmm. the one who, whose footsteps we should try to walk in, the one we should try to emulate in every way. Though referred to here as, a, as the Lamb, to us, He's the shepherd and we're His sheep. May we follow Him in spirit and in truth. There's these animals we talked about and all the others in the world as well. God made so that they survive on instinct. And, they, and that they do quite well. For the most part, they live to procreate, eat to survive, eat to survive the day, and have, have ways to store and preserve, preserve food and energy for lean times and up while other, others migrate but over long distances to find food sources. Some build nests and some have dens, and others seem to just seek shelter wherever they might be when the sun goes down. We would say that they live mostly in the moment. But we're special. We're special. He tells us we're made in His image, after His likeness. Not only did God give dominion over, uh, to man over the animals, He gave us the ability to, to love, to reason, think <coughs> plan and make choices. So may love always show in our actions and ways and in making those choices may our reasoning, thinking and planning be based on God's will lest the choices lead us down a perilous path of regret. May our choice always be to let God have His way in our lives. Let's pray. Let that be our prayer, God, that we would always want to let you have your way in our lives, that we would live more closely to you, that we might be more, more like you. We'll never get it right, but we can get it better with your help. So it's that help that we ask for now, God. Each day as we go back and doing whatever we might do, help us to, to seek you first, to include you in everything we do. And the results will always be better when you're part of it. It's when we go off on a tangent by ourselves that things really get out of sorts and downright ugly sometimes. God, help us not to do that. But help us to, to know you're with us or you will be with us if we, if we but ask. Once again, again, God, we thank you for this time together and your blessings on us. As we go out now, God, we just ask that you Use us according to your perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, when the saints so much in death. Go ahead, Scott. <laughs> 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 
Sun, the 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 sun,